What's up YouTube? This is the first installment of the video series I'm putting out showing you exactly what you need if you want to make your own handheld portable Nintendo 64 using all original parts. So a lot of things online you'll see are like uh, emulators put into these cases that make them look like they're playing Nintendo 64 games, but they're really not original cartridges. They're just little motherboards that have the games already installed on them, and you can't remove them or put them on without uploading it to a USB drive or the computer itself. What I've done here is I've built my own handheld portable N64 that runs off batteries, that takes original cartridges, has volume and brightness control, and really is an all-in-one console. It's almost like a Nintendo Switch without it being docked to anything that plays original N64 cartridges. It was a super cool project. It was very frustrating at times. It took a lot of research and patience, but the end goal was totally worth it. So let's get right into it. Here's my uh, first version. So as you can see here, this is a prefabricated case that I bought. I mainly bought it because of the clips on the side. It really helps it lock together a little bit easier. All of my future builds use 3D printed cases for many reasons. Forget about finding a case and then fabricating it and trembling all this stuff out. 3D printed, you can print it exactly how you want it. You can already make and design the grooves for buttons to fit in or the screen or the motherboard to sit in a certain spot. And you can also pre-thread the holes that screws can go into to hold this thing together. So as opposed to relying on clips, you can pre-make the case to already be ready to accept screws to hold it together, which in my opinion just makes things a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. I drew up a little whiteboard showing like the basic tools and parts that you're going to need, and then I also drew up a really basic schematic. I'm going to go further into detail on the wiring in one of the next videos. This will probably be a two or three part series. Um, just because I can't really fit it all in here and I don't want to make a video longer than like 15 minutes So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll show you what I got So here's my little uh, whiteboard that I drew up. I hope you guys enjoy my N64 symbol that I made um, You can see my cat decided to bunk against it and ruin it So first thing you're gonna need is pretty basic. You're gonna need a soldering iron. No doubt. No way around it Need a soldering iron. You're gonna need solder I'd highly recommend getting soldering flux. Soldering flux is pretty much a material that like kind of looks like jelly that you put on the solder or put on the wire you're trying to solder and it helps really bond that solder to the wire and to the motherboard or wherever contact point you're trying to get it to stick. I would get Kynar wire for your wire choice. This is a 100 foot spool of 30 gauge so you can see just how thin it is. It's super good for projects like this because it's very easy to bend, but it's not brittle, so it doesn't break. And it's really good at conducting, so you don't have any data or power loss using it. I've used it for my entire project, and everything works flawlessly after three years. So, I would recommend that. You're going to obviously need your N64 board, which is you can either buy a full console, or on eBay you can find motherboards individually for sale. Same thing with the controller. You're going to need a controller or a controller motherboard. You're going to need a screen of some sort, which I'll go into in a little bit in this video. You're going to need speakers. You're going to need a battery. You're going to need a voltage regulator. You're going to need a 100 microfarad capacitor. And you're going to need basic switches, momentary switches, tactile switches, whatever you want to use. Out of the things I've just named, those are the main parts. You may need some other parts here and there, but it shouldn't be much. You should be able to get the project really done with what I've just mentioned. I'd also like to mention that some of the other tools you're going to need, these screwdrivers right here, these are called game bit screwdrivers. One of them is for GameCube, one of them is for Nintendo 64. I forget which is which, but if you look at the screws on the bottom of your uh, Nintendo, they kind of look like a star, but they're not exactly. It's more of like a rounded flower. You can try melting like a pen cap and sticking it in there, trying to unscrew it. I think I tried that like three or four times before I just caved and bought these. I think they cost me like seven bucks each on eBay. Totally worth it get it if you plan on doing portables it'll make your life a lot easier i would also pick up one of these this is a tri-wing screwdriver this is used for gamecube controllers i've also built a portable gamecube it's not completely done it's super close i just need to finish putting the controller in everything runs it's already in the case but that thing saved my life because trying to get those screws out is a nightmare this is the case that i used right here this is a case by Logic 3. It's actually made for a Game Boy, but like I mentioned, I use the case specifically because of these clips, but my 3D printed cases going forward all have screw taps that are already threaded, so it's a lot easier to use. This was just a good basic case that I could find that I could fabricate before I have my 3D printer. So in this project, what you're trying to do is not get too overwhelmed when you're doing it and just break it down to as simple as you can. All it really is is your Nintendo 64, you have a controller, you have speakers, you have a battery, and you have a screen. 
That's really it, and you just throw it all in a case. Now you have to think of how do I connect each part to each other. So the battery doesn't necessarily need to go to the speakers because the speakers run off the motherboard, which power can run through that as well as the screen. It might not work right away. You might get some things working, other things not working. This is my first build, but I went through a couple N64s and a couple screens. On the first one that I did, I started getting sound, but I had no video. Then I started getting video, but it wasn't colored. It was like a negative looking video. And it was all super frustrating. I ended up finding out that my screen was busted, but that's also why I'm gonna recommend using a different screen than I used. The screen that I used in this guy right here is a Sony PS1 screen. I use this because it's very common amongst the community of building portables, because it's really easy to work with. It has built-in speakers, it's built-in brightness and volume control. So it's super user-friendly, but it is a very old screen, they're kind of hard to come by right now, and it kind of screws up the hobby for people that are collectors, which isn't the end of the world, but I'd rather not if I don't need to. It's also pretty expensive, so I'd rather get a better screen now that's cheaper, that is better to look at and more user friendly, even if it's a little more difficult to figure out how to wire things in. Because during this project, you will learn a lot of things through troubleshooting. You're not gonna get it right on your first try. You're gonna break parts probably, but it's a huge learning process to the point when I built my portable GameCube, I didn't break anything. I got everything working on the first try with every single thing I did, minus a little bit of troubleshooting. But I didn't have to break any parts. I didn't have to get any new parts in there. And that's huge, especially for a confidence booster when you're like working on these things by yourself and just countless hours of soldering and, and dremeling and all this good stuff. So I'll show you guys the inside. It kind of looks like a bomb, but it isn't. Uh, what we have going uh, on here is this is the Nintendo motherboard. Here is the 100 microfarad capacitor and the voltage regulator. Here's the Sony screen. I have one speaker above, one speaker on the bottom, and then here's the controller, and here are my batteries. None of this looks pretty at all. I never expected it to look pretty, but I'm very happy that it looks like it does because it shows how difficult it was to put all this together. To get all this stuff to work properly and not crimp any wires and not remove any wires and make sure everything ran properly was a huge success for me and it was like one of the best feelings when I finally finished this project. As you can see in here, it's pretty jam-packed. You can make this a lot less jam-packed. The screen that I use on my GameCube is the screens that I use going forward. It's actually a rear backup camera for like a dash on a car. You can get them for like 10 to 15 bucks, much higher quality than the Sony PS1 screen and they're super easy to wire in. With the Sony PS1 screen, I think there's like 15 little points on the front of the screen and then there's like the same on the back of the screen and they're really close together. So when you're soldering those together, it's very likely that you accidentally solder points together and that'll just either short something out or it'll prevent it from working. So I would definitely stay away from the Sony PS1 screen, get the rear backup monitor, totally works. I'll put a link in the description for everything you guys are gonna need only downside about not having the PS1 screen and using a backup monitor is that you also need to get speakers. So the speaker I used on my newer project was an HMDX Go XL speaker. It's pretty much just like a small little carrying speaker. It's about this big that like people used to plug iPods into in like the mid 2000s. You can find them online pretty cheap. You can definitely use other speakers, but those speakers are really user friendly and there's only like two or three wires on them. So I'd recommend getting those. I also would recommend making sure that you have these switches handy. These are tactile switches. So these switches, when you push it in, it bounces right out and it's more of like a hard click. This is a momentary switch, if you guys can see this. And it's like a smooth, it goes in and then just slides out. Slides in, slides out. Slides in, slides out. I would recommend getting really whatever you want, but I prefer tactile switches. They're a little bit more responsive, they don't get stuck as easily, and they're pretty cheap as well. I think I got 100 of them for like three bucks. On my original build, I actually just used the original controller and underneath when you take apart the controller, you have this little rubber pad that has a contact point on it. So when you push the rubber down, the contact makes contact with the controller motherboard and that's what sends a signal that you're hitting that button. All you need to do to bypass that is 
put one wire on each end of the contact point and wire it up to the switch serves the same exact purpose. Since this was my first build and I was trying to get it to fit in this case, what I ended up doing was just cutting out the controller head right here and I just relocated this little joystick right here. Another thing I would recommend getting is get an aftermarket joystick. This is the aftermarket joystick right here. I think it's like 15 bucks online. Again, I'll put the link in the description to everything. And you can see how smooth this thing is. Super smooth, bounces back, perfect. Obviously, Nintendo 64s are an older console. It's kind of hard to come by a good controller. And even when you do, you really don't want to like break that thing apart and ruin it because they are hard to come by. You can see how crappy this one is right here. It's like, you can see the vibration after, super loose. This is not even me moving it. This is just loose. This is just loose. Definitely get one of these aftermarket guys. They work perfectly and I, I have no bad things to say about them. This is the speaker that comes with the Sony PS1 screen. You can see it's just two wires. The speakers that I mentioned before, the HMDX speakers, I'm pretty sure they're two wires as well. Each one has a positive and negative and they're super simple to find on the motherboard to, for connection. Going forward in the next video where I show wiring, I'll get more into detail about that. But as for now, I just wanna give you guys a gist of exactly what you need so you understand what you wanna buy if you do wanna get into this project. So let me show you guys this little wiring schematic I drew up. It's super basic, but it'll give you guys the idea of what exactly you're doing here. All you have is your screen. You have two batteries that are in parallel. You have two speakers. You have your N64 motherboard. You have your capacitor and you have your controller. The controllers are really easy to wire up in their own. They're only three wires. You just disconnect the little uh, base that it plugs into on the motherboard itself, and then you can just straight wire those three wires from the controller. Super easy. Again, I'll show you that in the next video. All you're really doing is connecting the negative to the negative on each component and the positive to the positive. It can be very frustrating at times if you can't find the correct points, um, but in the next video, in the wiring schematic video, I will show you uh, specific pictures and I'll show you exactly where the points are on each motherboard to make your life a little bit easier. It's a super fun project. If it's your first engineering project, again, it can be daunting, it can be frustrating, but it's, uh, it's a great feeling when you get this thing done, man. And like I said, I've already finished my GameCube or almost finished my GameCube, and that thing was very easy to put together after learning all the things that I learned through this project and gaining all the experience that I gained. It was like night and day knowing things. I, I broke, I want to say, two N64 motherboards. I broke one or two Sony PS1 screens. I damaged like three controllers. The GameCube, nothing. On the GameCube, I didn't have any issues. I was able to get everything working first try. I didn't have any sound or video issues, nothing like that. And uh, it was a super cool project as well that I'm looking forward to finishing soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you the knowledge that you need to know what you're getting yourself into with this project, what tools you're going to need, what parts you're going to need, and if this project is for you. If you guys have any other questions before the next video comes out, feel free to message me. Just a heads up, on this channel, I do rap, I do play video games, so it's not only going to be building portables, it's also going to be like gameplay from specific games I play, such as Call of Duty or RuneScape, and I do write raps with my buddies and make some music videos to RuneScape and other video games as well. So if you guys are interested in that, I would love for you guys to check it out. I appreciate everybody stopping by to this channel, especially all the TikTok homies that really gave me great feedback on this project, man. I am going to be selling them going forward. I'm also going to be selling kits. I haven't decided completely on pricing, but I want to be reasonable with it. I'm thinking realistically, I could sell a kit for anywhere from three to 350, which would include everything you need for the project from motherboards to switches to the case. And it would also give you a specific schematic that I will personally write up along with these videos to help you build. And I'm thinking for a full console, it could be anywhere from 450 to 500, depending on how you want it how easy it is for me to build at the time, etc. I'm always up for discussion about these things. There's always room for negotiation. I just wanted to get this video out because a lot of people have been messaging me about it, asking me when it's going to come out. They want to build this. They want to know what's going on with it. So I hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned.